Welcome back to Live Life. So uh, back in June, I think it was like June 9th and up to Father's Day that uh, two different cars had failed. Like one was like it wouldn't start, blinker wouldn't go off. Um, it, was, it was struggling to start. So eventually um, I just kept the car on. I was working. So because I knew that if I shut it off, the car wouldn't start up again. So I was kind of thinking it was a starter and um i was thinking like oh like that's gonna be expensive and it's like not another expense you know when when it seems like everything goes wrong and you have to spend a lot of money and you can't like get things fixed that that will improve your life whether it's like certain bills or like you're worried about your rent or you need to get your tires fixed or your brakes it, it seems like things always happen when when you're in a situation of, of um, need, when everything is this crashing down on you. And it's easy to be negative in those situations or to be cynical. Cynical would be like, oh, it always happens to me. Or like, you know, I, I expect this to happen. Like where you just don't believe that positive things are possible. So the next week, my other SUV, uh, the transmission had an error code. And eventually, it, I couldn't make it far. And I knew that I was going to have to get a, a, a tow. But I was trying to save on the tow because I already had two tows already. And I had to do it. Like, I had to, like, just say, okay, I'm going to try to get this car home. I'm going to take the back roads. And it didn't work. I ended up breaking down somewhere, like, where I couldn't even, like, drive the car. Like, where it was in gear. And it was, like, just not moving. It was, like, mm, it's almost like you're in, like, neutral. That you're in a gear. So what happened was like, it had like a fifth gear ratio code, like on the BMW. And, and I went to take it in for a diagnostic and they told me not to drive it no more. They said that the transmission's worn out and there's like fluid in there and there's like little debris and stuff. And what, what happened is that each time I'd go get service on that car uh, way back, you know, uh, probably from 83,000 miles up to it has 191 so all the times i would go to get service i would um i would ask about the transmission because i, I heard that the bmw transmissions are um they're like a closed unit so they're saying that you don't have to like change it change the fluid or anything it's like built for the life of the car and that's like a lie because you should service that at a hundred thousand miles it's not like m my recommendation it's in my situation is that if I would have serviced it at a hundred thousand miles and I would have done the, the transmission where they changed the gasket and they replace the fluid that that transmission would be working today. Like I could go drive the car, but I can't get into fifth gear. And where can you drive around that your car's not going to go into fifth gear? Cause you could go drive around residential. And everything but once you get on these other roads and you ha you need to go faster like say 40 50 you need to get into fifth gear so so essentially the car's in good shape the engine's strong everything else could it could be repaired but that transmission is a problem because i could be driving at any time and it could just go out and then that would be it like you'd be done and to get a rebuild transmission is expensive. It could be like $3,500. You want to get a new transmission, then you're looking at double that price. And then you have to pay for labor. So when your transmission goes out, then it's going to cost you a lot of money. And it may not be worth it. Because if your car's not worth that much money and you need a new, like a rebuilt transmission or, or um, a new transmission, then that's pretty much it. Like you don't want your engine to go out and you don't want your transmission to go out. So... You have to do these repairs or this maintenance stuff. You have to take that serious. Because if you're doing like these ride sharing jobs, like you're driving people or you're doing delivery and you're using your car, or say you're, you're a pizza driver, you do, uh, you know, deliver pizzas, then you, you need to take care of your car because think about it. The more that you're on the road, you're wearing out your tires. Like think about it. Like it's not that I'm making this money and I'm feeling good or it's extra money. You're, you're losing money. You're losing money because you're paying for the gas and that's expensive right now and you're accelerating the death of your car because all these parts that you're overusing even your window 
when you're rolling it up and down, up, down, up, down, like when you're going to like drive throughs to pick up food, think about it all the wear and tear. Like you're you you're overusing things because you're 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 not always rolling your window up and down. You know, like even with the electric, and doing that all the time. So if you have a BMW, and you overuse your window, and your window regulator or um, actuator goes out, that's going to cost you like seven hundred dollars. If your lock goes out, same price. So you have to think about doing jobs that are not going to require your car or require certain resources so if your car is not working or you need to get it fixed you can't do something or it didn't pass inspection something like your mirror had a problem and now they're not going to pass you an inspection your car could drive it's in good shape it's you, you have it you're leasing it from the program of the company and then they're giving you a problem with their mirror and now you can't work for like a week because oh you don't have a, a plastic cover on the back of the mirror so now we can't uh, pass you because you need a cover on it. So now you you need a whole entire mirror. You need a whole entire mirror. And it's going to cost you, you know, like with labor and everything. And then you might not even have that money to buy that mirror. Because now you put your money into your, your gas tank. So, I mean, it's always something. Something that is blocking you. And you may think it's a curse. You might think that you got bad luck. You may think that life is against you. And from my experience, you know, based on those two cars going out and not being able to work for a month and just feeling like sometimes you just start to get tired and you don't know why all these things keep happening over the years. But think about it. Think about why certain things happen. And it could be from above. It could be telling you, like, you need to stop doing these things. Like, stop beating yourself up and, and putting yourself in this position to where you're not going to get anywhere in life. And... You could want things, you could watch other people you've helped uh, succeed in life and they could have treated people terribly. They didn't care, they were just using people and they just had bad attitudes and somehow they find this happiness. And, and it could eat away at people because then they know that they have done good things for people and they've always looked out for you know the best interests of even strangers and had the compassion and respected people and just just walked around life with you know um a lot of confidence and positivity and just did everything they were supposed to do in life and then on all these things keep happening it's not just at this moment it's life it's the past it's when you're you're growing up it's when you go to high school when you you become a young adult like all these things, it's always like something. It's like cars, it's jobs or money, like certain jobs you, you that you get that sink you more. And and then maybe people say things about you and put you down or negative and they don't believe in you and they just see that you're always struggling and having challenges. And then they just don't think that you want more when you want more and you you always plan for more. Like behind the scenes, you're always doing a lot. You're not just sitting, you're not remaining stagnant. So what I'm telling you is that life could beat you up. You could have these storms that come in your life, but they don't last forever. That they're there to clean up things. Because what happens after the storm, you clean up. If there's damage, you clean up, you repair. So in your life, there's gonna be storms they're not going to be all the time, but if you put yourself in a position to where when these storms come that you can't handle it because you, you don't have any savings, you got everything just going against you, then they're going to be much harder. But you could reach down deep inside yourself and fight because that's the best thing you could do is fight. Don't give up. Don't give up and don't give in and don't. Allow other people to, to hold you back. Don't allow distractions to block you. That if you want something, you could get it. And you, you have to believe and you have to have faith. You have to think of outside of yourself. That if you don't believe in God, then believe in the universe. If you don't believe in the universe, then believe in something outside of yourself. Like I always have a communication with God about things and, and I'm honest about it, like if I'm feeling good, but during my darkest moments when the light is very dim 
and it seems like things could be um, hopeless, but I don't try to give up that hope. That I'm always thanking God for everything I got. Even if I eat something, I appreciate that. Everything I got, I appreciate. And I always do it, no matter if my life is falling down. And there's some things I've I've wanted recently that I haven't gotten in a long time. And I put in the work behind the scenes. I just wasn't like praying or asking for things. I wasn't saying like, well, I want this. And I need this and I deserve this. I wasn't even asking for those things. I, I wanted certain things that I needed. Like to get a smog in my car, but I couldn't make the repair. And I knew what the repair was, but I couldn't make it. And eventually I could make it. And I decided that I should do it. And I did it. And I went and, and passed the smog and I got my sticker. So imagine not having your sticker for like, you know, you have a pass to drive. You paid your fees, you have insurance. But you don't have a sticker. So now you're prone to getting pulled over and you just don't, you don't feel good because you're like, I wish this car was, you know, in like in compliance. Like say you have the sticker, you have your registration and everything. It was just that sticker because of a smog, because of a repair and the repair I knew. And I knew I could have done the repair, but it would have taken time. But I knew that if I tried to do it, that I took a risk. I took a risk that if I like try to screw off this O2 sensor that was closer to the, cause there's two in the uh, engine. There's one by the manifold and then there's one closer, like uh, in the front of the engine closest to you. If if you made a mistake, you pulled the wire off or you stripped it, then then you'd be doomed. Then you couldn't get your car small cause you wouldn't have that O2 sensor on and it'd be a problem. And imagine they have to like refile to make that strip again. So you could screw in. So I knew that I'm taking it to the dealership. It's going to cost me money. I have it. It might hurt a little. But you have to do it. And even if the dealership was saying like, are you sure it's that part? Like, you know, we do. We need to do a diagnostic. And we need to, um, you know, it could be like your catalytic converter or something. I was like, no. I want that piece like, like, because I called ahead of time and made the appointment. And I wanted that piece. I wanted that repair. And I knew it was that 100%. Just like I knew... A couple weeks ago with that one car that was telling you that in, on June 9th that had the problem starting and then it wouldn't start anymore. And then I had like the blinker wasn't working. It was stuck and all that. That I knew that it was a starter and I gambled. I rolled the dice on it, but I knew I, I had hope because I could have wasted my money. I could have changed that starter for $400 and then the car wouldn't have started. It could have been some electrical thing or some short somewhere. But I knew it was a starter. Because I, I studied, I researched, I was online, I was spending time looking at the symptoms of the car. And I would read forums and I would watch videos and I would just keep investigating. And I knew it was a starter. So I ordered a mechanic to come to the house and fix the starter to replace it. And the car started right up. And now I'm driving that car. Just like I knew it was the O2 sensor that had held that car back for all the times the engine light. And I it pulled up a code for sensor one, uh, bay one, sensor one. And I knew it was that, that, that O2 sensor. Cause it's the air fuel. Um, cause both of them are like, they regulate your air and your fuel. So you could lose gas mileage. Cause I based it on the symptoms. I'm losing gas mileage. Cause I used to get X amount of gas per tank and, I, and, and something per miles. So say if you're getting 20 miles a gallon, now you're getting 17. So if you lose 15% of your gas mileage, then there's something that's causing that to do that. So in my case, it was that O2 sensor. And that's why the light was coming on and staying on or going off. And I was going to go get it smogged when the light went off. But I knew that when they run your car on an OBD2 uh, scanner, that if that O2 sensor was faulty, that it's going to, I'm going to fail the test because it's not going to produce a certain limits. Like it's not going to pass on the computer. So then I didn't even take the risk of even failing because then you'd have to pay another $30 for a retest. So I just said, I'm, I'm just going to do it, fix this part. It didn't matter what the dealership said, like you need a, a diagnostic. It could be your cat. Now I was like, I know what it is, but I wasn't like, I was being respectful about it. I wasn't be like, no, I just want to do this. You know, I was just like, oh no, I'm, I'm just going to do this. Like, I know that this is a code and... And I'm confident that this repair is going to work. And then they did it. They did the repair. The monitors were ready because when the monitors are ready, they're all green. 
when they hook it up to a scanner because that's the same thing they're going to do at the smog place then the car passed and i was super excited and that was after i got a job that i wanted and it was the first job that i probably had in my entire lifetime that i actually wanted because i mean there's other jobs i've perform but they were temporary or i would do other jobs to make a living and there's times i'd make money and all that but it wasn't even about the money it, you're making a difference but also it was it wasn't like jobs that i was like okay i wish i could get this job with my degrees with my experience my skills it was like they actually went after this job and i pursued it for a month and i was confident i could get it i knew it was the right fit for me and, and then i got it and I was excited. And then on that same day, I got the repairs. And then I got the smog. It's all like these things that were just happening that a month prior, I was kind of feeling like, dang, all these things. And then I couldn't work and I didn't have a car. It was hard to get a car. And it was just like, you didn't, you felt like you didn't have anything. And then you were going to sink further into your hole, but you didn't, you had to believe and you had to have hope and have that faith of like, that there is a reason why these things are happening because when the cars broke down, then I started applying more. I started applying to jobs more, jobs that I knew I could do, that I qualified to do, that I was qualified to do. And I started doing things like where I just wasn't like asking for things and just sitting and being stagnant and saying like, well, I deserve this, I need this. Or like, you know, why me? I was like doing things. I was cleaning up my resume. I was applying for all these jobs. I was talking to my best friend about uh, certain jobs where he was helping me to to tighten up my resume and then I was trying to get this other job which took a month and I had to do like four interviews and answer all the emails and do all the stuff and I had to go into the city do the interview and I did another zoom interview at home so I was doing all these things behind the scenes and then meanwhile I knew that I needed to repair my car and I did I, I repaired the car I did the repairs and it, it was hard to do these things because they're expensive and you don't always have the money to do them. But then you just have to just do it to get the help that you need. And then you, you could, you know, if, if somebody could help you, then you have support. And you could do these things, then you could, you know, um, repay them or do them a favor. There's things that you can do. And it's better to do them than to sit down and beat yourself up and be negative and think that that everything's always against me, nothing will get better, that life is, this life is a waste, and then start to hate people that treated you bad, and then you see them have better lives. Instead of hating them, like embrace them and say congratulations. But maybe you know who they really are, and you're not with them. If it's a friend or a relationship, you're not with them, they're not in your life, and be thankful for that. Because sometimes people are not in your life, like you, you try to go talk to someone and you're like, oh, you put all your value in them. They're like, oh, they're going to make me happy and people are going to see me with them. And then people are going to know I'm someone that have something to offer. And you just put all this value like on this person, like where they're everything and you'd be like blessed to have them and so thankful and life. Will, you could finally be happy and you're putting all your value, like who you are into into someone else. You're basing your happiness on another person don't do that because people are saying like don't chase because they are interested in a person like people are like relentless in their pursuit of of relationships like where they they're about to get out of one relationship they're in another and if that doesn't work out they're in another and another and another and they can't be alone they can't be alone to figure out what they really want for their life because you're supposed to be sharing your happiness sharing your love but don't feel like, oh, I'm going to love myself because I'm going to be with this person and they're going to make me feel better. And I'm going to finally do all these things. And, and I could travel with somebody. And I could go to the movies with someone. I could go out to dine. You could do all those things with certain people. Like if you have friends, you could do that. But if you feel like you need a relationship because you need someone to, to be with you 24-7 to do all the things that that you that you can't find inspiration to do or you're not even motivated because you like say, I need someone that could support me someone that does the same things that that i like to do and just think about that do you want to be around someone 24 7 where you're sleeping together you know like you know sleeping together like um throughout the night and you wake up 
having breakfast and then you do all your creative things with them and then you go to the gym and you go to to travel and you go to dining like everything everything you do is like it's almost a reflection of them like you're looking in a mirror and that's like your relationship because it's just a um say if you're a girl looking and you see the guy and it's like the guy's a reflection of you so so it's almost like they're your shadow for the day every day seven days a week 24 hours a day i mean do you really want that you have to really know what you want because this started like with the cars because what i want to lead you in is that okay these things happen and you can't work and everything that you don't you can't afford the repairs and then is this it then it starts to steamroll like we're you know like snowball in your life and everything's like feeling like it falls apart but you have to maintain it you have to be strong and say you know what i'm gonna fight this because like are you just gonna like allow yourself to sink like if water's going after you like a tsunami and you like could get away from it or you could hide somewhere and you could survive something that's like a little more extreme but just think about it like in your dream or something that you have a tsunami dream and and you're like trying to get away from this thing would you want to get away from it or what are you gonna just let it say like you know like forget it i don't care like i don't like my life so you could like take me under you know so the message is that you have to value yourself and you have to respect yourself and you have to love yourself and even if you don't love yourself and you need to do all these other things then go do them go out there and do self-care but but i promise you that you can love yourself right now because you've done things in your life that you are someone, you're unique, and you survived to, to this date right now. If you're watching this video to this moment right now, that you have survived your life. It may have been tough, may have been difficult, or maybe you had your ups and downs, or you're happy, then you're sad, then you're angry, and you have all these emotions that don't allow your emotions to, to dictate how you live your life. They're, your emotions is more like a reaction to something. And if you have feelings, for you know someone and you're like thinking that they could be a perfect fit and you could be happy with them then then go do it don't worry about what other people say like oh like they're not they're not like you or you deserve better or they don't look good go do it if that's what you want because that is what you want and if it fails then it's on you and that's okay because then you learn you learn that that you needed to you learn that you needed to find out yourself because sometimes people don't want to do, uh, they want to do something and then the person tells them like, don't do it and you don't need it and, you know, just be happy yourself. And and then you, you think that people are against you and then you go try it and then it crashes and burns. But if you didn't try it yourself, then you might blame other people. You might have regrets. You might have resentment. You, you might just be angry at people. But what I could tell you is that you need to find out things for yourself. For your own life if you want to go after your dream then you go after your dream and if you fell at your dream don't think it was a mistake because along the way when you were pursuing your dream you met people you did things you worked at certain jobs you did a lot of things you got skills you were always preparing because you knew that when you had that moment to live your dream that it would be possible because you prepared that you were good at say if you're a screenwriter you're good at pitching that you're good at storytelling you're good at doing re revisions that you're you're good at character development that you understand uh, what the audience is looking for like you're doing all these things you're communicating something so you're building your skills along the way so if you don't become a screenwriter or if you don't ever write uh, award-winning script or you just never make a, a an option on your on your script don't feel bad that you didn't get it because it, it was your dream but the thing is that putting your dream on a pedestal is going to have the same results as putting a person on a pedestal that you you want to have a relationship with and then when that person treats you bad because you put them all up that you put them up high on there and then they're like talking down on you and yelling at you and putting you down and, and treating you bad like you're dirt kicking dirt on you don't let that bother you like stand up for yourself if somebody's treating you bad you let them know and if you don't need them cut them out like cut the line don't keep going back don't go back to something it's like when a person abuses a dog or cat and then the dog and cat keep trying to go back, but eventually they're going to get smart and not want to go back 
because they have no choice sometimes and eventually they end up a, like in a, a rescue and, and then they get adopted into um, a family or another owner that will love them and embrace them and will take them everywhere and will treat them like they are them. So then you, you like the animal will get someone that will, will care for them like they care for themselves and not think they're a burden. And that happens. Like, you don't want to get in a relationship and be all needy, clingy, desperate. And then the person knows that. And then they take advantage of you to make you do all these things and make it look like they love you. Like, I love you. I'm so happy. And you're everything. And they put it out there. I mean, social media is so weak because people do it. They put it out there. Like, oh, I'm like, a, like you're everything to me and all that. And they just keep that image out there. Because you don't know who they really are. It's that image that they put out there that they project that. I'm like this great person and I'm uh, the best and look who I have and all that. You don't know how they really feel inside. You don't know who they really are because they've done things in their past, in their, say, not even their distant past, in their recent past. Because when I say distant, it could have been many years ago, but no, recently done things that weren't so good and that were horrible and said things that are terrible and just done things that are terrible. And nobody knows that because they keep it within, within themselves or within the person that they know. And then they could just cut that other person off that knows who they really are. And that person could know like the, the darkest things about them. And, and that person could conceal it and keep it and lock it up and, and say, okay, you know, I mean, I'm not out to hurt anyone but you know who they really are. And when you see sometimes when they find success, then you're just like, whoa. So sometimes that could be the trap is that we see people go out there, treat people horribly, want really bad things to happen to some people and do all these things. And then they go out there and, and meet someone or they get this great job or they meet this dream relationship and then they're, Everything is going great for them and they're always getting rewarded. And we may be, see that. We may see all these things happening and then these things happen in our life. So it's easy to fall into that, that trap or even that hole of like, I try to do all these things to, to and, and I take personal responsibility for mistakes. I help these people and I give it, I pour it all into them and to make sure that they do okay. And I do all these, you know, things. I always work hard at my jobs. I treat people good. I, I say good morning to people. I help people that need it. I take care of animals. You could, you could do all those things and you could acknowledge that I do all those things. And then you could see somebody that does all these things because they're so selfish for themselves. And they do all these things for their own happiness. And even if they make it look like they're in love with someone or they're with them for all the right reasons, then the person that they're with doesn't even know that that they're filling a, a role a role of like helping them to do all the things they wanted to do before and couldn't do because they didn't have that type of say support then it's kind of like they will like be really relentless to protect that to say like nothing's gonna stand my way to keep this relationship or to keep this whatever they're chasing after. And sometimes they could be chasing after these dreams that they're not good enough to accomplish because they don't give the effort that is required to achieve it because they're all over the place. And, and this is another topic then because we're going to switch gears. Focus. If you're focused on one thing, so say I'm focused, okay, I'm going to get this job and I'm, 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 I'm applying for this job and then they're requiring all these interviews and they want these documents and all this stuff. I'm focused on getting that, but that's not my only focus. I'm applying for other jobs too and saying, okay, I'm going to apply for these jobs in this, say, the city for this particular city that I could do because of my degree. I'm, I, I'm qualified to do. I might not be qualified, say, on day one to do them, but I could eventually do that job. So I apply for those jobs. I don't apply for like, uh, an, like a, uh, an analyst or a managerial type of position that that I'm not qualified to do because I'm not there yet. It's not that I couldn't do the jobs. I just hadn't done those type of jobs. So then I'm not going to qualify based on my past experience on my degree. I can, but then they're going to require you to do X amount of years and that 
doing that job. So then another focus could be like, oh, I need to get this car back on the road, but then I need to focus on one car because I know, okay, the transmission is out on that car, I paid $80 and transmission is like, not like out where you can't drive the car, but it's just saying that there's a risk that it could go out if you continue driving the car. So then maybe you wanna just put it on the side and say, okay, maybe in a trade-in, you could do this as a trade-in later, but don't drive it to, to knock out the transmission because now you're ruining your investment. So, so I focus on, okay, instead of focusing on these two cars, I'm gonna focus on one car. And then I go do the starter. I do the O2 sensor. I get the, the, the car smogged. And something happened to the car before there was a, some damage that I'm gonna get fixed. Um, a hit and run, somebody hit me. So it's like all these little things that that you weren't able to do, but then you didn't get rid of your car because say if your car was damaged and you couldn't pass smog, it's not that you couldn't pass smog, you just knew you wouldn't pass smog with an engine light on, but you didn't fail the smog because you didn't take it in for the test because you knew what you were dealing with. So you had to wait until the right time. So sometimes we had to wait until the right time. And sometimes on relationships, we could wait until the right time and it might not work out because we need to we need to talk to them when when we had an opportunity now they they're with someone else so if you keep waiting for something then maybe it's not going to happen you keep waiting for a dream you keep waiting for a relationship and you're not prepared for it then you're not, it's not prepared maybe it's not the right time maybe it's not going to work out because they're not meant for you but you think that they were meant for you and you keep chasing and chasing and then they they say rude things to you they treat you bad and they try to make you feel like they feel because they're depressed about their life so it makes them feel better to beat you up because that's what people that are bullies people that are narcissists people that are um there's negative people they do those things when they're feeling down they beat other people up they they drag people down they step on people don't let those people influence the way you feel about your life if you have a positive spirit and you have like a really warm heart then do those things. If people are telling you to act a certain way, like, I don't like that you do these things, don't don't listen to them. Like, you could take some of their advice. Okay, yeah, I'll apply for jobs. I could do these things. But don't change who you are because people don't like something about you because they're doing things that you don't like about them, but you're not telling them that you don't like those things about them. They might not like that you're open. They might not like that you're, that you're uh, trusting or that you you do things for other people, that you put other people first. But the thing is that that's who you are, that you do these things. Maybe you need to make some adjustments in life. That's why it comes down to focus. If you start to focus on things, I'm gonna focus on, on this dream, but then I'm gonna do a job to make it possible. If you focus on the dream only, and you don't have the resources, and your life is beating you up, and everything's falling apart, then to go after that dream, then you're going to start to look at that dream as being something negative because like, I wish I didn't have that dream. I wish I didn't do it because I look at my life. I wasted years and time. You, you didn't waste years and time that you could have accomplished that dream if you actually did the things that you needed to do. If you were focused, if you had that laser focus to say, okay, what is it going to take to live that dream? If you actually had a plan, I'm saying it's not like a plan like this, these things need to happen to make this dream possible. It's like, what do I need? to live this dream. Like sometimes you need time, you need space, you need the freedom, you need to um, schedule things, to do, to schedule time to do it. So what I'm saying is that if you focus on what you want, if it's a car repair, you're like, okay, I need to get the money to do this repair and I'm gonna do my repair at this place and then it's gonna fix this problem. Like that's like a really narrow focus. But when you're focusing on a dream, it's like the rest of your life because are you going to just be happy because you, now you got one acting role in a movie that was like, okay, I got, I'm on the lead cast and I'm like, that's my dream. Or is it you doing that job as a dream career for the rest of your life? And it leads to other things that could be the dream or you having the, the opportunity to, to purchase some land and have some home somewhere where you can look at, look at the beach and have some coffee and have the freedom to do that and have your pet next to you. And that could be your dream to say, like, I did all these things in my life and this is the dream. Just like in the pursuit of happiness when Will Smith 
got the job and then he went outside and he was celebrating he was like this emo his emotional about it and he was chasing after son he won so bad and he was just like um just had a son only um well in real life it would be like his baby son but in, in the movie it'd be like a six-year-old and he had him and he was doing it for him and doing it as a as a family together because it has uh, the character of the wife had left because she can't do it no more. She can struggle no more. She was burnt out. She had that life of like, I'm cynical. I'm burnt out. I can't do this more. I'm tired. And what you're doing is not getting us anywhere. And I can't do this anymore. I'm going to leave for my own self. That's basically her character. So if you want to have that moment of like that pursuit of happiness, this little moment called happiness. So he gets a job. It makes everything possible. And that this is his moment to say, this is my happiness. And that I fought hard for it. He didn't even make excuses. Look at his character. He didn't use his situation of being homeless to, to get that job. He didn't uh, want people to feel sorry for him. Because people do that a lot. People want to put things out there like I'm sick or somebody's sick. Pray for me and all that. Like They want people to feel sorry for them. And they like the attention. They like the attention of having attention. To be, to be acknowledged for that attention. I'm sick. I have this going on. Please pray for me. Uh, look at this. Look at that. Somebody's sick of my family. Feel sorry for me. Like say nice things because I want you guys to know that you guys are great for saying these things because I'm putting it out there. He wasn't doing that. Will Smith's character, Chris Gardner, was not doing that. He was private. He just did things. He didn't like to tell them any uh, sad stories or... Uh, yeah, I was uh, sleeping in the bathroom of a subway or we were in the shelter last night, but you know, I'm like, I'm here doing it. He was doing what he needed to do. He didn't make excuses. He didn't doubt something. He studied. He didn't think about what was really going on with life. He knew that things were happening for a reason because they were going to connect him to where, where he wanted to be in life. And just like when like my cars were breaking down and all this stuff that I was applying and I actually got this job that I would love to do and I'm going to be doing in a few months. And that it was something I, I haven't had in many years, probably not even in this century. It was like when I got out of the military, it was something, the last time I had something that that, that was going to be that great, that, was, that could be a career. And not all these like jobs that you work in a restaurant, serving in restaurants or doing ride sharing or, you know, uh, doing freelance stuff and writing and all that you're doing everything to use your skills to get stronger for the moment when you need to uh to share those to to get a position so what i'm saying is that when life is beating you up it's not really beating you up it's telling you it's like clearing away things you don't need like certain people you don't need in your life certain things that you know, like bad habits and other things that you don't need and it starts to make you do things that you do need to do because you have to take the steps. If you want to get a job, it's not going to come knocking on your door. If you want your dream, it's not going to like wake you up in the morning and say like, let's go, let's go, like let's get writing, let's get running and all that. Your dream is not going to be waking up, but you should be inspired by the fact that you have that dream, that you're capable of doing it. And that if you stay focused, that you can get it. If you want a relationship and you see someone that you like, then yeah, you could go and say, hey, you want to go out? Or like, hey, let's go hiking or let's go somewhere. Like, like let's go to this cafe, there's this place. Like, be don't be like, oh, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to eat? What do you like? Like putting it all on the other person. Like come up with some ideas and be creative. Like be who you are in your real life. Don't be someone like out there like a puppy chasing after the person and, and saying yes every single time that they need someone. And they know that. So they'll take advantage of, if they don't really want you, they're not interested in you and you're just giving them all this attention and you, you like them and you'll do anything for them, they're gonna take advantage of you. Don't put yourself in that position because then in the end, you're just gonna be angry and you're gonna feel like, like, why did I do that? And why did I do these things? And you might look at things that you wrote in the past to them and it was like, why would I write that? And why would I think that way? And why would I feel that way? And then you start to be like angry about yourself. Because you could look at yourself and see certain things that you put out there and that wasn't who you you really are it was like how you were feeling at a certain moment when you were vulnerable 
or you're healing because when you're healing do you do these stupid things and they have to that you have to do these things to snap out of that type of uh i say uh, self-sabotage or um being self-destructive of doing things to hurt your own life because in the end we are responsible for the things that happen in our life because we put ourselves in those positions but it's easy to blame other people and if you start saying that's that person's fault that person's fault that person's fault and all these people do it and all these narcissists go after me and all this you're making you're, you're deflecting you're deflecting blame to other people and you're saying that other people are responsible and you have no responsibility for the things that you do your your behavior your actions and then you want to cast off great people and say that they're bad people so then you can feel better about yourself that is like I'm a good person and that person's not good. And then you start treating people a certain way. Don't don't do those things. Be focused on what you want. Whether but if you're like focus if your focus is spread thin all over the place and you're just all over the place because you want all these things and you're not even committed and you're not disciplined and you're not consistent, then you're not gonna achieve the goals that you want because you're all over the place. You're just not focused on one thing. If you're on a mission in the military, you're focused on one objective and you have all these other things, but you're trained to do it and you're trained to work with your, your team. But if you're just all over the place, you're sitting there texting and doing all this stuff or thinking about all these things, and you have all these other things, then you're not going to be focused on that mission and you could be a, a liability and that's more extreme. But in your everyday life, if you're focused on doing all these things, you want to be a YouTube star, you want to be an uh, Instagram star, superstar, you want to be like Hollywood superstar. You want to do all these things and you're just all over the place. Do you think that you could accomplish these things if you're just all over the place and you're not focused on what you really want? What do you really want in life? What, do, you, do you want this relationship because that's enough for you? Do you want to be an author? Do you want to be a singer? you want to be a songwriter? You have to know what you want. That role. Because it could branch off to be other things. But once you establish yourself in that role of like that's my dream or i want to be in that relationship because i want to share my love and my happiness and it looks like like i'm just interested in having a relationship with that person and if they don't want it and they're not ready don't force it don't be like i wish that you wanted it because it would make me happy and all that don't put things on yourself like trying to make people don't make people feel sorry for you so then they do things because they feel sorry for you now they want to go out with you because you make them feel bad about it be confident, like carry yourself with respect and value. Like if somebody don't like you and they're putting you down and treating you bad, then cut them off. Like stop pursuing them and keep people in your life that that you know that are a good fit. And sometimes they're not the perfect fit. They do things, they, they say certain things to you, they treat you a certain way, but they're a good enough fit. Well, you're not going to always find certain shoes that are going to fit you good, but you know that the size is the size that you wear maybe is like some shoes are gonna be like this is a perfect shoe it fits perfect and that could be like your really good friends or family and then some shoes that are kind of loose that they're the same size and they're kind of loose then you know there's gonna be some problems with it a little you're not gonna always wear them just like you're not gonna always see those people you're not gonna always deal with them like you choose to do what you want to do there's just so much to talk about but i just want to tell you that things are going good you, uh, because you have to believe things are going to say things are going better in my life because I had to believe and have faith and to have hope and to know that these things are happening. I don't know the answers to why they're happening. I know they're happening. I'm tired of it. And I'm going to do something about it. But I know that the answers are going to come later. That you always get your answers, whether the relationship is not a good fit for you or it is a good fit. You always get your answers if you want your answers. Look for your answers. Until the next time, value yourself, respect yourself, love yourself. Peace out.